Rhino horn. Should we trade to save? In the early 20th century, there were an estimated half million rhinos on Earth. However, by 1970, there were just 70,000, and today, only about 28,000 rhinos survive in the wild. All five species of rhinoceros are listed on IUCN, that's the International Union for the Conservation of Nature's Red List, with three out of five species listed as critically endangered. Having roamed the Earth for millions of years, the rhinoceros is now threatened with extinction. At the heart of this conservation crisis is human demand for rhino horn. According to IUCN's African Rhino Specialist Group, since 2008, poachers have killed at least 5,940 African rhino for their horns, or nearly two animals per day on average. Despite intensified enforcement efforts, public awareness campaigns, global petitions, celebrity advocacy, increasing media attention and political pressure, the situation with rhino poaching has reached a crisis point. The brutality of the activity is almost beyond comprehension, especially when we realize that poachers now often don't kill the animals outright, but drug them and brutally remove their horns and allow them to reawaken in agonizing pain. Likely somewhere, right now, a dead or dying rhino is being defaced with a chainsaw for its horn. It is important to emphasize that at this point in time, all trade in rhino horn is illegal. Humans, it seems, have been fascinated by these magnificent beasts for thousands of years. In fact, rhinos are depicted in early cave art dated between 10 and 30,000 years old. In the 5th century AD, ancient Persians believed the horn could be used to detect poisoned drinks, a belief that persisted among Europe's elite well into the 18th and early 19th centuries. In China, the ornamental use of rhino horn dates back to at least the 7th century. And in the 16th century, Chinese pharmacists prescribed dissolved rhino horn powder for snake bites, hallucinations, typhoid, headaches, vomiting, and devil possession. Thus we see that the human fascination with and demand for rhino horn is nothing new. Today we know that rhino horns are made of keratin, the same material found in human hair and fingernails, and extensive testing has determined there is absolutely no medicinal value associated with its consumption. So why is this commodity still worth more on the black market than gold? Well, despite medical testing, rhino horn remains a prized ingredient in traditional Chinese medicine, now practiced in 70 countries outside China, as well as in China itself. In 1993, the Chinese government banned trade in rhino horn as part of an ongoing effort to end the use of endangered species in traditional Chinese medicine, and Taiwan and South Korea followed suit. Though some traditionalists continue to advocate for and continue to use rhino horn in traditional Chinese medicine, other practitioners are now using traditionally prescribed substitutes, and this does offer some hope for lessening the demand for rhino horn from the traditional Chinese medicine market. Unfortunately, two new markets for rhino horn have recently emerged in Vietnam. Just 10 years ago, there was hardly any evidence of rhino horn use in that country. However, in the last decade, the nation has experienced rapid economic growth, increased disposable incomes, and a rapid increase in cancer rates. Vietnam now appears to be the leading destination for illegal rhino horn, which is being promoted in that country as a cure for cancer. IUCN's Wildlife Trade Monitoring Network, Traffic, refers to this as a sensational urban myth. Rhino horn has also been popularized in Vietnam as a hangover cure for the nouveau riche, increasing its value as a status-conferring gift or bribe among Vietnam's elite. The fate of the rhinoceros is now inextricably tied to global trade decisions. One more indication of how much our world and the world of wildlife conservation has changed. 
with a great international demand fueling a thriving black market. Many have asked the question, why not make rhino horn trade legal, regulate it, and render poachers and their illegal trade irrelevant? After all, you don't actually have to kill or even harm a rhinoceros to harvest its horn. It typically takes less than 10 minutes to safely dehorn a tranquilized rhino, and the horn grows back and can then be trimmed or harvested regularly, typically every 12 to 24 months. Furthermore, dehorning is in itself an effective disincentive to poachers. So legal horn trade and rhinoceros conservation would seem to make perfect partners. Or do they? CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Flora and Fauna, imposed its first global ban on international trade in rhino horn in 1977. In October of 2016, CITES members voted to reject all proposals to sell rhino horn, whether seized from poachers or obtained through natural deaths, euthanasia of problem animals, or harvesting from live animals. And why? Because many conservation groups share the view that any legal trade would stimulate demand, allow legal trade in horn to provide cover for illicit or illegal trade, and thus complicate law enforcement efforts. They further point to well-known political corruption in a number of selling and buying countries and express strong doubts that legal regulation is even possible. Advocates for legal trade argue differently, insisting that rhino horn is a renewable resource. They believe legalizing international trade would entirely undermine the black market, establish legitimate use in trade, promote economic growth, and positively impact human livelihoods in some of the world's poorest countries and do so without negative consequences for conservation. If the sale of horn were legal, advocates argue, rhino ranching would yield more profit per hectare than any other form of agriculture, thus safeguarding wildlife habitat while simultaneously producing incentives and funding for conservation efforts. Those who are pro-trade also cite advances in DNA technology which now make it possible to track a horn or its parts from rhino to consumer, thus increasing the likelihood of effective monitoring and trade regulation. Both sides make compelling arguments. And while both sides also agree that more law enforcement is needed, both agree that enforcement alone is not enough. We need something more, and that something is an incentive to keep living rhinos with us, not incentives to poach them. Sustainable use and legal trade have proven manageable and effective incentives globally for conserving many wildlife species. Why not for rhinos? Trading their horn legally may be a tough choice for some, but may well be our only hope. One thing is clear, losing our fight to save rhinos is no choice at all. <laughs>